Sideways, no waving at you. Okay, so uh, <laughs> this is uh, Rob from Laugh Up. Uh, behind me is Luke. Yeah, you've got us in the same room today. <laughs> <laughs> and we have Simon Deacon from uh, Witcher Lab. Hello, Simon. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Simon. Do you want to kick off just by telling us a little bit about uh, what you're doing? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so Northern Kingdoms is a low rules, high immersion LARP uh, set, as the name suggests, uh, in the world of The Witcher. Um, our timeline, if anyone's familiar with the games, is set during the third game by uh, CG Project Red. Okay. Um, um, and we've got their permission to use the intellectual property to run our game, so we're not um, naughty or anything like that. Mine, if anyone's familiar with the games, is set during the third game by uh, CG Project Red. Okay. Um, um, and we've got their permission to use the intellectual property to run our game, so we're not um, naughty or anything like that. Mine, if anyone's familiar with the games, is set during the third. Yeah, I'm a bit there, we? We, have, we had a little bit of glitches with the uh, sound there, I'm so sorry. So you're doing... Blimey, what does sound like that? <laughs> <laughs> you had an awesome echo though, I have to yeah, say. Yeah, it's really, really, really good. good. It sounded really good, didn't it? Yeah, we were just getting into the... Um, uh, comment, entering some comments for you, unfortunately, and the echo kicked in. But it's all gone now, it's so... All gone. Do you want to just quickly let people know a little bit? Say again, sorry? Do you want to just quickly repeat some of that? Because pe case people couldn't hear it, I'm so sorry. Oh, right, right, okay. Grr, technology. Yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> yeah, one step forward, two steps back. Um, so the system itself is a uh, is a low rule system with high immersion, good kit standards. Um, we'd like to um, promote our players to yeah. um, really put a lot of uh, effort into, into their kit. Um, the game itself is um, under the... Uh, <coughs> Sorry, under the law of um, the Witcher universe. Yeah. Um, the game itself, the timeline, is set during the third um, game, the video game by CG Project Red. Um, and we've actually got their permission to use the, uh, the intellectual property, so we're not um, infringing any copyright or anything like that. I think that's part of the bit that got muffled when we had that problem with you being mm. um, with us accidentally causing feedback echo. <coughs> So I think that's a really important point. So you actually have this isn't sort of a game kind of to use a really bad phrase, kind of ripping things off a bit. But you're actually now fully permissioned and licensed up with them. Well, we're not licensed by them. Um, okay. We can't use any trademarks or anything like that. Yeah. Um, we are. Um, we do have permission to do it. <clears throat> CG Project Red. Um, they're absolutely fantastic. Um, really good company. Um, anyone who's like runs an Etsy shop that sells products that they make about the Witch Universe or, yeah. or anything like that. Um, they're they're not bothered at all. Whereas other companies, um, <clears throat> whereas other people, they may might make stuff from another game, and the producers, the developers, will jump on them. Um, yeah, so there's no problems there from from CDPR. They're absolutely fantastic. That is superb. So, um, how, how long have you been going with um, Northern Kingdoms then? Because we noticed that you'd got, um, you'd had a gig, hadn't you, in November of last year, and you've got two this year, am I right in saying that? One's in yeah, Swansea yeah. as well, so isn't it? Uh, our, first, our first event was last November. That's right. Um, at Burton Park uh, Agriculture Museum, they got this fantastic biking village. Nice. Um, and, a, and a road before there, so we had all the player base inside this extremely immersive um, village and then they got to go out and uh, fight amongst the, uh, the, other, the other parts of the site. Unfortunately the site itself is um, very limited size wise um, so obviously there, there wasn't as Yep. Yeah. 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 And uh, we've got a lot more real estate there for the players to just sort of go out and about and yeah. do what we need to do. Uh, and then in October, October we've got, um, uh, we've got, thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've we got to have, have a drink, yeah. On us. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've just been uh, 
provided beverage. beverage. <laughs> <laughs> so um, th there is one in Swansea, isn't there? Now this this might actually uh, appeal to our more local follower. Yeah. Um, and himself. Uh, um, because, uh, like I say, so. You, you say about the witch, you know. I have to say, uh, witch is very kind of new as a concept to me. So, can you tell me a little bit about what the Witcher universe actually is? So, so effectively, effectively um, for anyone who doesn't, doesn't really follow the books or the games or anything like that, that, effectively the whole um, Witcher storyline uh, surrounds monster hunters. Effectively, effectively. Right, okay. So, um, these witches are taken as children and then they're trained. Um, and then fed all these mutagenic cocktails and things like that, turn it into effectively your awful monster hunters and give them these very precious weapons to do that. Yeah. Um, the main story from the book surrounds the, the protagonist, Geralt of Rivia, and he's pretty much throughout the entire book, he's searching for his sort of adopted daughter, um, to make things simple. Um, and throughout the books, there's this entire conflict going on between um, the Northern Kingdoms um, and the Empire of Northgard, who are invading the Northern Kingdoms throughout the entire uh, series of books and into the games. Um, so when people they read the books or they or they play the games, they're always reading about Geralt Rivia. Um, and some of the other uh, surrounding characters, and then in the games, they're always playing Game with Rivia. So, what we wanted to do was um, delve more into the backgrounds and the lore and things like that, and um, sort of allow players to take on the roles of mm -hmm. the other people, so like your simple soldiers and your merchants and your bards and various other people that um, wouldn't. Wouldn't always get a look in when everyone was just thinking about get all really this big old witch you like. So we limit the amount of witches in our system because, in the law, um, in the current timeline, they're, they're very rare because they've had this big fight and a lot of, uh, a lot of them have been killed and they can't make new ones at the moment. Um, and that's, that's just a way for us as well to um, sort of focus the player based on these other roles. roles. Yeah. Um, you might, might have more fun with, you know. Yeah, yeah, no. Or, yeah. You know, yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd love, love to see, see personally, um, someone who has no idea about the world of the Witcher comes in, in just with his peasant. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'd be good. Yeah, yeah. This is a peasant farm, oh, rocks up and goes, fly, what's this all about? Uh, that yeah. would be good, yeah. It, it is good because I think um, sometimes when you have uh, a person with, with no no historical you know understanding of what's going on so they're coming in it for the first time they add that little mm. something to the whole event don't they um yeah and uh, sometimes a little knowledge can be you know kind of even better newbies are, are, are really good so do you encourage you know kind of new people i mean obviously this is what the third event after next year the end of this year will be the third event that you've done yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, absolutely. Yeah. Um, we had a few brand new artists coming to our to our first event. event. Sure. Um, because it's good to get into it. Obviously, the witch is quite popular in certain circles. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, you know, people who love games but not necessarily for LARPing. Yeah. Um, I've got them all. Yeah. Yeah, that's really, really good. So, I love the fact that it's a, uh, a kind of, um, it's it's all it's. I'm, I'm just trying to think of uh, mm -hmm. an alternative that you could relate the Witcher Lark to because I'm I'm struggling to actually find another storyline that people might be able to to kind of relate to. It's very new, isn't it? From from that point of view of I haven't seen any other any other Larpers try this type of event. Um. No, I don't know really. Uh, That's okay. The closest, the closest thing, um, the way you're sort of running the game, yep. um, closest thing, um, sort of management wise, would, would be a, a game I played a few years ago called Shadow Wars. Right. Um, right. Shout out to the guys who used to run that and, uh, and the guys who were running the next one on from that. Sure. Uh, different sort of line, but. Um, a lot of influence there. Um, sort of the way we run it is that there, there's the, the, the overriding uh, plot um, where players can. It's not linear. It's, it's totally, you know, it's totally fluid. So players 
um, through the action or inaction um, can really change the plot, depending on what they do. Don't do. Um, but not only have we got the main plot, we've also got contracts and quests, like side quests, effectively, or for lack of a minute, so, um, effectively, we've got a notice board and it has all the, the various side quests and things that players can sign up for, and they'll get, they'll get paid for these uh, extra. Yeah. extra quest and we've got um, no coins and physical resources that they can use and uh, you know, benefit from. Marvellous. So uh, can you give us a taster yeah, of what great. is currently going on? So for the person whose son is, you know, is watching this and going, do you know what, this sounds awesome and I'm fairly close to Swansea or I'm prepared to travel or wherever up North Europe, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, can you give us a taster of what's currently going on in the Witcher world? Okay, okay, so um, during the third game, game there's a big, big invasion, and right. it's uh, Northgard, the Empire yeah. of, um, have uh, really travelled far up in the Northern Kingdoms, and the majority of the Northern Kingdoms have now either been conquered or vassalised by uh, Northgard. Um, currently, there's um, the main ruling power in the north um, is a, a country called Dania, um, but there are also these other, uh, um, like, uh, city states are uh, sort of just keeping them themselves and themselves and things like that. The, the player base um, play mercenaries, and they're currently um, the first event was sort of to get get the game running and uh, really really you know, start things off, um, you know, running. Um, so effectively, the the, the the plot of the first event was um, spies of Odin. Spy, uh, spy on the enemy has reported that he's got this information and he's um, disappeared effectively. Yeah. And the player base had to you know, complete various tasks and things like that to find out uh, where the spy was and culminated with, um, with the siege at the end of the event on this uh, Roman fort. We had some players that effectively had to um, sneak in, break in, use magic to kick the doors in on this fort. Yeah. Um, and Kick in all the North Guardian baddies that were inside and then find the spine, which they did in the end. And they found out there's this um, other invasion being planned on this island, a nation called uh, Skelliger. Yeah. Um, the, re the reason for this being that um, they're, they're pirates, effectively, and they've been plaguing the, the North, North Guardian shipping lanes and things like that, and yeah. um, taking them out of the war, and then the North Guardian effectively have free reign. Yeah, but the sea, which is allows us to then move the troops up and down under the grass, effectively. So, um, eventually, we'll see our, um, our players move to this island nation yeah. and effectively um, prepare for an invasion, effectively. Wow, well, that's story. So, that's going to be, I suppose, the invasion is going to be the next one. Is that the November event? Well, well I, I can see. say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. So yeah, really that, that, sounds, that sounds brilliant, doesn't it? That sounds really, really good. I guess in Rapture, it's living in. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So where can yeah, we I mean, not, not only is all this going on, the players also have their personal plots going on at the same time. Right. Yeah. Um, so so we, um, we, we encourage, we encourage players, players to write these extensive, extensive character backgrounds. Sure. Um, I've shot in the foot a couple of times, because, because some, some players provided, provided us like seven page backgrounds yes. to their yeah. character. Um, yeah. And in fact, what we do then is, is it is low rules, but there are rules. So um, effectively, the players have a certain amount of skill points they get on there. There's sort of starting skills, and, and there's no um, quantified uh, character advancement system. It's all done through a downtime uh, narrative. Um, so effectively, the players then write their backgrounds and send their characters to us. We will read through them and either integrate those into existing plot lines um, or create entirely new plot lines for them. And also, depending on the backgrounds, also give them these unique abilities uh, they can use actively or passively or in downtime to for a little bit extra bonus. Oh yeah, cool. I'm and, loving that. I like the I like the way you're sort of into integrating sort of character design downtime and a bit what's going on in the events as well. That's, that's a that's really actually your your high immersion actually is really immersive for the players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're also, also um, to, to follow along with the uh, the low rules and the high emergency side of things. We also 
um, only have a very few amount of combat calls. Yeah. So um, under normal circumstances, there aren't really any apart from your obvious safety calls. Yeah. Um, and uh, the witch is using their particular version of magic because yeah. it's very, very quantified in, in the game world. Um, we we can't really not use the names of the of the spells. Oh yeah. Like the magic, magic of it in terms of uh, the mages and things like that, it's all roleplay. All roleplay. Yeah, great. My battle and, and striking calls are, ow, why did you do that? You're going to have someone's eye out with that, and, and, and really, am I dead that quickly? I think was the other one I, I tended to use quite frequently. Um, oh. So we, we can find you on Facebook, because uh, yep. you're all over Facebook, isn't it? Um, and uh, but can you book through Facebook or, or is there a, uh, a, a web well, presence? We've, we've currently got a booking, booking website, website um, <laughs> going through another system, system and we're sort of under the umbrella of the moment, right. uh, just for insurance and um, just ease of until we have our own dedicated website and things like that, um, which is um, by D Games. Uh, I think all, all the details are on our Facebook page anyway. So. Uh, people will find it there, so it's not a problem. Yeah, people just go to your face, the Facebook page and they can get everything. Yeah, and I have looked at your Facebook page and you can get everything in there, yeah. It just thinks to mm -hmm. spare everything. Yeah, yeah. like I said, um, like, like I said, we have our own dedicated website and all the yeah. rules and mm -hmm. pictures and things like that. I've got there, got there eventually. Now, I also noticed, and I think Rob's been looking at this quite a lot in, with absolute envy, is your beard. Oh, yeah. Oh, that is hugely long, is it yeah. not? That's now, spectacular. Uh, <laughs> I was say, that's taken quite yeah. a while. So I'm guessing there's a Viking influence for you there. Well, I do with the leads, so there's a, a Dane aspect. Yeah, right. I bet, <laughs> yeah, why wouldn't you? No. <laughs> that is quite a beard. I do love that. <laughs> I had a beard like that once. Honestly. I say once, I had a beard, but then uh, someone said, one of my clients said that uh, once I shaved it off, that uh, they were fairly glad because they thought I looked like a chubby Gary Glitter, which um, oh. which did not go down well at all, uh, and obviously since yeah. then kept it fairly short. Yeah. And he's no longer part of my gang. <laughs> got to be a certain age really? to understand that, haven't I? <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear, oh dear, no, oh, not again. <laughs> Who did I deal with? <laughs> I came to see you, you are very yeah. lucky, I came you to did. see you today uh, so yeah. that we could we could do this together. Yeah. And Katie's online as well, isn't she? She is online. She's listening to all of this. Okay. Yeah. Does it